Welcome to another video in this long comprehensive course about options. In this options course, starting with the first video, the plan was to lay down strong foundations about the options basics. So when we start moving forward and getting into more advanced topics, we won't get lost. This what I have done so far in the first three videos in this option course. And last video, we started options strategies and we discussed the long calls. And today we will see what are the long puts. First, let me get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. In brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. Okay, so with this out of the way, let's get started. This is the plan for today. We are going to have a very quick review about what we learned so far. Uh, what do we mean by options, the types of options, the options strategies characteristics, the implied volatility, and then we'll have a very long discussion about long puts. And as usual, I'll end my video with the closing notes. Okay, in case you haven't watched my first three videos, uh, I'll just go over a few slides real quickly. The, the first slide uh, is about what do we mean by options. We have two types of options, calls and put, puts. When you are long an options contract, you have the right but not the obligation to buy or sell the underlying. And when you are short an options contract, you are obliged to fulfill the contract terms if assigned. There are four combinations when it comes to options types. You could buy a call or buy a put. You could sell a call or sell a put. When you buy a call, you have the right but not the obligation to buy a fixed preset quantity of the underlying at a predefined price on or before a predefined date. When you are long a put, you have the right but not the obligation to sell a fixed predetermined quantity of the underlying at a predefined price on or before a predetermined date. And when you are short a call, when you sell a call, you are obliged to sell the underlying at a predetermined price when you get assigned. And when you are short a put, when you sell a put, you are obliged to buy the underlying when assigned. I'm, I'm doing this quickly because I've already discussed this in, in details in the first three videos. Next, we have what's called the Greeks. And the Greeks are variables that affect the options price. These are variables that you input in one of the options pricing models. And these variables will have an effect on the options price. The first one is delta. Delta is, an, is the amount an option price is expected to move based on one point change in the underlying stock. Theta, the amount by which an options price will decrease every day. Gamma, the amount of change in delta for a one point change in the underlying price. Vega, the amount by which an options price will change for a 1% change in the volatility. And finally, Rho, the amount by which an option price will change for a 1% change in the interest rates. Okay. And next we were introduced to the characteristics of options strategies. 
And we said that we have five characteristics. The first one is the direction. Are you bullish, bearish, or neutral about the underlying? And then the amount of risk in the trade, is it limited or unlimited? The potential profit, is it limited or unlimited? And then we mentioned volatility. And volatility and time represent the sensitivity to the position. For, in for instance, if Vega is negative, so high volatility will hurt your position. We said that Vega is the effect on the options price with the 1% change in volatility. So is, if Vega is negative, an increase in volatility will have a negative effect on the price of the option. And sensitivity to time, if theta is negative, so time is not in your favor. And then I introduced what's called the implied volatility. Volatility is a measure of the variability in the daily prices of the underlying over a one year period. This is the same as the prices as the prices standard deviation, the volatility, not the implied volatility. Just the volatility is the same as the standard deviation. When you use the options pricing models to get a theoretical price for the calls and the puts of a specific options contract, the volatility variable you use is a historical volatility, is the standard deviation of the underlying. You calculate it from the historical stock prices and I explained how you can do that. Now, implied volatility, it's an outcome of the options pricing models. You input the, the, the market prices for the calls and puts you are looking at, plus other variables. And you get, based on these prices, the market prices for the calls and put, you get the market implied volatility, the market expectations about the range of trading for this security, for the underlying. And uh, we got some examples when we explained the expected move. Next, I introduced the term options strategies and I said that options strategies should be looked at as a complete trade plan, not just executing uh, some buying and selling of, of some options legs. It should be a complete plan. This reflects your expectations about the future price action of the underlying, of course, to generate profit. That's why all of us are trading, to generate profit. When, when you buy a put option, you are expecting the underlying to decline. You are forecasting lower prices. But this is not the end of it. To have a plan, an option strategy should include entry points, follow-up action, mental stop loss point or points, because you could decide to cut your losses on, 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 on different scenarios as, as we are going to see later on. What's your exit plan and what's your profit taking plan? Are you going to wait all the way or if certain scenario happens, you might take a partial profit or we will see all this later. I went over this in the in the long calls, and I'm going to repeat it again in the long puts, so uh, everyone should should be familiar with the concept. We are interested in buying a put option, as most of the books and instructors say that buying puts and calls are simple. Uh, I don't think this statement is accurate because. If you, if you understand options and 
you do your homework, you do proper analysis. All the option strategies are, are, are easy, are, are straightforward. Even the most complex strategy that I don't know, maybe contains eight legs, or I don't see why would you skew an, an option strategy with eight legs, but I mean the most complex. If, if, if you follow, if you follow the same steps that I'm introducing here and I introduced in, in, in the video about the long calls, trading option would be very simple. So if we are going to be long puts, we need the underlying price to go down by at least a certain number of points before we can make a profit. Not just that, the underlying must make this minimum move before the expiry date. Remember that time is not on our side. The amount of time value in the premium that we pay will decrease by time as the date to expiration gets closer. Also, some books and instructors say that buying a put or a call is somewhat neutral to volatility, but, but in reality, increase in volatility will always add value to the options contract. If you are long, if you own an options contract, no matter uh, if, it, if it's, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, if it's a put or call, increase in volatility will add value to your position. It will help the position. The underlying might not move at all, but if for some reason the volatility spike, you may still make a profit, and of course vice versa is true. For example, if you buy an option right before earnings, when the volatility is at its highest levels, then earnings come out and assume the stock didn't make the expected move. You remember the expected move? We'll go over this again in this video. There is a phenomenon called volatility crash. The volatility will collapse. This will definitely reduce the options value. So all options are affected by volatility. In, in our today's position to be long puts, our risk is limited. We cannot lose more than the premium we paid, of course, plus the commission. This is our maximum loss, no matter what. And our potential profit is theoretically, un it's, it's not really unlimited because the underlying cannot go below zero. But if the, the company goes bankrupt, so you'll, your profit will be <clears throat> from the strike all the way to the, to the to, to zero. Okay, so I've done a quick review. If, if anything is not clear, be, please go back to the first three videos in the course. And let's buy Apple put option and see the steps. First thing we will do, we will look at an options chain. Again, I introduce this term, what's an options chain in my first video. So here we have Apple options chain. We opened it and the first thing that we noticed there is earnings on 29 of July. So this is a very tempting event to make use of. You could, you could utilize a lot of different strategies around the earnings, but this is not the scope of this, uh, of this uh, video. We will discuss uh, straddles and uh, different strategies later, but you looked at the options chain and you saw that there are there is earnings on the 29th of July. So you would consider buying a put with expiration date after the 29th of July. So what do we have? Let's take a look. You check for the options contract available after the 29th of July and the first regular monthly expiration was on the 20th of August. Apple's price is 127, 127.35. Here is the earnings date, 29th of July. So we have about 22 days or two expiration. And because Apple is at 127, we are going to buy a put option 
So we are looking at the 125 foot and the 130 foot. These are our two options. The 125 is for $434 and the 130 for 684. The 130, if you remember the in the money and out of the money and add the money uh, terms, again, I introduced this in uh, the, the first video about options. This is so much in the money. Our risk will be much higher. So if I was to choose between these two, I would definitely choose the 125 foot option. Okay, so this is what we will be looking at. I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so it's more clear. Here, this is the 125 and this is what we will be looking at. Okay, so the strike price is 125. The expiry is 20th of August. It's a put option. The implied volatility is 24.7%. And the premium is 4.34. You remember price is the same as the premium. And the Greeks, the delta is minus 0.42. This means that if the underlying if apple goes up by one point the premium will go down by 42 cents because this is a put <clears throat> if this was a call the delta would have been positive okay you're following and theta is 0.436 every day the premium will go down by 0.0436, 4.36 cents. Okay, 4.36 cents. So this is 4.34. Of course, this is theoretical because, as I said before, all these values are dynamic. We are going to see this uh, in the next slide. But theoretically speaking, if the universe froze overnight and nothing happened, everything is the same. We should expect the price, the premium to be 4.294 or something. Okay, then we have gamma. This is the change in delta, as we said before. And finally, vega, which is the effect of the volatility on the premium. Remember, I said that if volatility goes up, it will always help a long position. So if volatility goes up by 1%, the premium would be this by that. Everything else is constant again. Okay, let me show you something interesting about theta because I want you to give a lot of weight to theta because <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of, of, of the most important geeks that would affect your position. Theta is extremely important, and I'm going to show you why. I've done something similar in the last video about the long calls, but now I'm going to, to go a bit deeper into it. Now, this is uh, screenshots from uh, one of the brokers I'm trading on. It's Interactive Brokers. I added the website here. This is a screenshot of Theta on 12th of June. Okay. At 125 here, it's 0.381. We are at 1.27. So as we saw in the in the option chain here, it was 4.0.0436. So assuming that the price is at what one two five. This is just to show you how time decay increased dramatically. I should have pointed this to one one two seven because this is the price. But anyhow, <clears throat> assume that the price is is one two five, just for the sake of of, of this example. The theta is zero point zero three eight one. Okay, and this is twelfth of June. 
This is 25 of June. It's, let's say, two weeks. It went up from 0 0.038 to 418. This is less than 10%. Okay. Now it's 418 and it was 381. Okay. Now we at 418. Now we are going to move forward in time. And let's say today is 9th of July. It went up to 0 0.048. You see? From 38 to 41 to 48. Now the rate is increasing. Can you see this? Next, let's say today is July 16th. And Apple is at 125. Now it's 0.53. So in about 30 days, it went up from 38, 1, 2, 5, 3, 0 0.0. This is in about 30 days. Let's say we are going to start trading on the 14th, Monday, the 14th of June, 2021. <clears throat> After one month, the time decay, the amount that we are going to lose every day because of time, went up from 3.8 cents to 5 cents. Okay, this is in plain English. Okay, let's keep moving. Now we are 23 of July. This is about one month to expiration. Okay, now we are at 0 0.59. I'll, I'll just put this from memory. We started at 381 and then 41 something and then 4853. Now 59. 0 .0 now the, the, the position will lose about six cents every day. Six cents every day. Okay. Just to simplify your life, this is this is six cents. And we have one month to go. The change, um, just to make our life simple, let's say 10%, uh, 15%, uh, 15%, and 15% increase. During all this period, <clears throat> okay, we initiated the position, let's say on the 14th of June. This is in five weeks. Five all right, it went up from four cents to six cents. Okay, I just want you to see how theta moves when the options contract get closer to expiration. The exact numbers is, is not important. We went from four cents to six cents, 50% in five weeks, okay? This is 30th of July. We have about 22 days to expiration. Let's say three weeks to expiration, three weeks to go. And we were at 59. Now we are at 67, 6.7 cents. Three weeks to go, two weeks to go. Now we are at 8.2 cents. Can you see uh, the rate is increasing fast? During the last four weeks of the options life, time decay increased dramatically. The rate of time decay increased dramatically. And, and the amount as well. Okay, let's keep moving. This is 13th of August, one week to go. The option would expire next week. <clears throat> now we are at 11 cents per day. Okay. Assuming that we are still at 125. This is 16th of August, Monday. It's a Monday. The option will expire next Friday. In the last slide, we were 13. <clears throat> 
So this is over the weekend. Okay? 13 is Friday. We skipped Saturday and Sunday. The market opened on Monday. We checked the performance graph to see our theta. It's 14 cents. From 11. You see where this is going? Now, one day before expiration. This is Thursday. We are at 22 cents. So in the last week, between Monday uh, 16 and August 19, this is four days, theoretically speaking, we lost 15 cents, let's say 16 and then 18 and then 20, something like this. So <clears throat> we lost in the last week, before expiration, uh, about 71 cents in the last week. You see the value of theta? This is the purpose of these slides, not the exact numbers, but to see <coughs> how time decay increases, the rate of time decay increases dramatically <coughs> when time passes by and the option contract gets closer to expiration okay so now that we know all this what do we need to do let's see what the market is telling us about the implied volatility and the data that we got from the option chain this is the same um, data that uh, i got i just replicated here so i don't have to keep going back and forth between the slides this is the Exactly the same thing. The market's implied volatility is 24.7. I got few comments about my uh, video uh, about long calls concerning the expected move. So maybe I was not very clear. So I'll, I'll do it step by step here. And if you follow along, you'll see that it's very straightforward. When you get an IV of any amount. This IV, IV is the expected annual move plus or, or minus in both directions. Okay. So from this number, we could say that the market is implying a 24% or a 25% move up or down. I should have put here 24.7, but anyhow, this is just for you to understand how this is calculated. Okay, so now we can calculate the market implied annual move for Apple. The market is saying that Apple could move plus or minus 24.7%. You just multiply this by that, there should be a 7 here. But anyhow, it's about $31.5 in either direction during one year from today. Okay? So the implied range, the market, the market's implied range for Apple. 127 plus or minus 31.45. This one was wrong. Based on this figure, if you subst subtract the 31.45 from Apple's price, you would get a range between $95.9 and $158.8. This is what the market is implying, is expecting. Apple's range during one year from today. Okay, very good. But this whole year will not do us any benefit. We need to see what's the expected move for our counter. From the implied volatility, we can calculate the market's implied daily move based on 252 trading days in a year. 
the underlying can move on a trading day. So for you to get an accurate expected move, you should use 252 trading days or 251 or 252.5. It depends on every year, just to be accurate. And when you initiate an options position, you would see how many days are left to expiration. What I do, I just count them. I count the trading day, as we are going to see on the, on the next slide, to get an accurate expected move. I know that the difference would not be substantial, but just to be accurate. So anyhow, you divide the implied volatility here. This is IV. This is the same amount as this one. By the square root of 252, it will give us 1.556. The market is implying a daily move in either direction for Apple of 1.556%. So the daily move is $1.98, up or down. So the range would be 125.37 up to, this is up to 129.33, okay? What about our option? Our option will not expire in one day. Can I just multiply this by the number of days? No, this is how you do it. We have 69 days to expiration. You get this from the option chain. I counted how many trading days in this 69 days. I found that there are 50 trading days. Let's find the expected move for this period. This is, this is exactly as the last equation here. Okay. IV over trading days. This is exactly the same. It's you can put IV here, it's the same. But the issue between the number of trading days left before expiration over the number of trading days in a year, same thing. This gave us 11%, okay? We can also compute the same value using the daily implied move that we calculated in the last slide. You remember here, we got 1.556% implied percentage move in either direction during one trading day here, which is $1.98. Let's see how we can use this. Again, same data here and same information here. We can also calculate the percentage move during the period until the options expiration from the daily implied move. In this case, we are not going to divide, we are going to multiply, okay? This is the implied daily move that we got a couple of slides back, and this is the trading days here, the square root of the trading days. It will give us the same amount also 11%. It's the same, it's two different ways to calculate the expected move during options life until expiration, okay? So the market is implying that during this 69 days, Apple could move up or down 11%. 11% it's $14. So $14 minus 127, it's 113. $14 plus 127, it's 141. This is the range that the market is expecting until 20th of August. Okay, is this clear? So this is what we got from the last slide. And now let's assume we are interested in buying 10 Apple puts. This is going to be the symbol. Okay, again, I introduced how to read an option symbol in the first bit. Just quickly, the first part is the ticker. This is the type, put or call. This is the expiration. And finally, this is the strike price. 
So how much premium we are going to pay? This is the premium. Price is the premium. We are interested in buying 10 contracts. And we said that for stocks, each contract is 100 stock. So we multiply the premium by the number of contracts by the number of stocks, the quantity. We have to pay $4,340. Very good. What was the next step? Let's draw the PL diagram for the put option. Strike 125, and the premium is 434. I've done this on Excel. It's, it's very simple. Um, if you're interested, drop me a line. I'm going to send it to you, or you can find it anywhere on the, on the internet. We start, let me change the color quickly. We, we start by minus the premium here. Okay, this is our position now. We are minus 434 or $4,340. This is what we start. If the stock keeps moving up, this is the direction of the stock keep moving up. This is, this will, will, this will always be our maximum loss. This is our maximum loss. Okay, let's assume that Apple started moving down. First point is the break even. Where are we going to break even? 120.66. From where did we get this number? Do you remember? Our strike is 125 minus the premium. 4.34 equal 120.66. We need Apple to go below 120.66, so we start making profit. And this theoretically goes all the way to zero, but <clears throat> the, the, the chart will not be, uh, will not look good. It would not make any sense. So just stop at 70, 75. 70. So if, just for the sake of argument, let's assume that Apple, for some reason, went down to $70 here. Our profit will be $50 per stock and 66 cents. We paid 434 premium <coughs> minus 55, correct? 125 minus 70. This gives us $55. We are not going to make $55 profit. You have to deduct the premium. Okay? Intrinsic value and the extrinsic value. Intrinsic value is this amount. If you want to know your profit, you deduct the premium. Extrinsic value is the time value. Okay? Now what do we do? We have a lot of information. We know the expected market range, the expected move. We are not in the trade yet. Is it a good trade or a bad trade? We, we, have, I, we have no idea yet. We don't know. Are the odds will be in our favor or not? We are going to risk Four three four zero dollars. Apple is at one two seven. One two seven. Our break even one twenty point six six. Can it go below one twenty point six six? We don't know. We need to see what are the possible scenarios and start planning for the trade. This is the purpose of this slide. Failing to plan is planning to fail. You should put all the possible scenarios. One of the scenarios is <clears throat> Apple will not go below even 125. It's possible. We don't know. This is just a reminder. This is the premium. This is the break even. Let's open Apple charts and see what we can get out of them. I got this chart from tradingview.com and this is the daily and this is upload.
Notice that I included the Bollinger Bands. This is a measure of volatility. It's an indi indicator that gives you an idea about the stock's volatility. When I consider any options trade, the first thing I look at is a chart with Bollinger Bands, two sig the boundaries, two sigma and three sigma. Sigma is the standard deviation. So two standard deviation up and down, three standard deviation up and down. And I add the ATR, the average true range. The first thing that you would notice is Apple is not a volatile stock. It touched the three standard deviation only once. It barely touched. It's fair to say that it has been always bound by its two standard deviation. Here it's around the two standard deviation. Here it's around two, two standard deviation. It tested the, th the three standard deviation here. This, this could be an excellent entry point, by the way. <coughs> Note. Never depend on one indicator when you are doing technical analysis. It's a very bad habit if you look at this and you say, wow, this is a good entry. It could be a good entry. I'm not saying no, but you need confirmation from other technical indicators for the timing. It's about the timing. We are looking at the daily. I included the value of the daily. 3x standard deviation and 2 standard deviation. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> as per the statistics, for a 2 standard deviation, we could be 95% certain that the price will lie within 2 standard deviation. For three standard deviation, it's 99.7% certain that the price would be within three standard deviation. So theoretically speaking, we are 95% certain for today, because again, these are dynamic values. Tomorrow, these values would change. If you open this chart in the morning, you are 95% 95 certain that Apple would be within this range. 99.7% it will be within this range. Okay. The ATR, I couldn't put this here for some reason. I don't know. But anyhow, this is the 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 average true range is 2.18. And the 20 days moving average of the ATR is 2.59. Okay. Let's look at the week. So I've done the same thing, three standard deviation, two standard deviation, and these are the values. This is the chart, this is the chart that we care about most. Why? Because you remember our option has 69 days. This is about 10 weeks. So the weekly chart is more important to us than the daily chart. You look at the weekly chart to get a sense about the trend. Is there a trend? Is it range bound? Here it's, it's range bound, you see. It's forming a triangle. So maybe there will be a breakout up or down. And the ATR, ATR, because this is a weekly, of course, it's a larger amount. It's 6 .6, 6 .6 dollars within a week and the moving average the 20 it's 7.85 what we are going to do with all this i'm going to show you in the next uh, couple of slides i'm just scratching the surface when it comes to technical analysis you can never count on any single indicator and you take a decision you you should combine your indicators between Volatility, volume, 
momentum, and so on. Let's look at the chart and see if we can find anything. In. The first thing is this trend line. This goes back to September. We are still on the weekly, by the way. This is still on the weekly. We are interested more in the weekly. So this goes back to here. This is September, I would say, maybe August. <clears throat> Apple has respected this line since August, more than 10 months or 10 months. And it's testing it. Many times it tested it. This could be a support. This could be another support. This could be a resistance. Plus the points that we got from the Bollinger Bands. This is how I'm planning to look at this long put trade. I need to put scenarios. To put scenarios, I need to, to see what are the strong points for Apple, supports and resistances. Okay, let's see. This is a summary. From our simple analysis, we it's fair to say that for the supports, the May 10 low, 122, the two standard deviation was 117 or on the daily. The three, three standard deviation was 111.84. The March 8 low was 160. Okay. We can do the same thing for the resistance. We have the high on the 26th of April, 137. The two standard deviation 138 and 143. Okay, very good. Now what? Apple is at 127. Our strike price 125. The premium is 434. This is our break even. What could happen? What are the scenarios that we need to be ready to act if any of it happens? Let's see. First scenario. Apple closes above 137. We have 69 days, 50 trading days. One day, Apple closes about 137 with a decent volume because <clears throat> sometimes market makers will just run stop losses and the, the, the stock will reverse with a decent volume, above average volume. Do you remember that I said that we cannot put stop loss when we are trading options, but we need to put mental stop loss. So this is would be definitely a mental stop loss. Anytime Apple would close above 137, with a decent volume, you're going to close the position. What will happen if you close the position? The position that we bought, the, it, the, the Apple price was 127, and we bought 125, we paid for $34. This is, all this amount is time value. The intrinsic value in this position is zero. If it goes to one, 37, this is going to go substantial. So if you decide to get out, you will still have some time value. Of course, it depends on when Apple is going to close above 137. We are going to initiate the position on 14th of June. Of course, this is not a recommendation. This is just an example. <clears throat> Let's say after two weeks, Apple broke above 137. You still have time left there will be some value. So you're not going to have 100% plus. Maybe you can get dollar, uh, dollar fifty from this amount. Second scenario, 22 days into the trade, we are going to, to be around the, the first week of July, roughly speaking, 22, 14, 30, yeah, let's say <clears throat> about 6 July. You remember the earnings is still on the 29th. So there is 23 days to go to earn. 23 days to earn. 
Apple stayed range bound between 122 and 130. And nothing looks exciting here. Would you get out and minimize your losses? Because you could get maybe $3.50 from this amount. If you lose 5 cents per day, this is about $1.10, you would get $3.20, $3.25. A third scenario, 22 days into the trade, Apple is testing its trend line. Now, the trend line is changing every day. Here, for example, this point is, let's say, 125. After a few days, or after, sorry, a few weeks, this is in weeks, it could be 127, or it's going to be 127. If it's here, first week of July, we are maybe 126.50, okay? So, Apple is testing its trend line, but there is no volume to support a legit breach of this line. What would you do? This is a possible scenario. You need to have a plan. Will you wait? Is the volume increasing? The volume indicators are negative, so you're expecting more downside. A fourth scenario, Again, 22 days into the trade, Apple broke below its trend line with above average volume. This is very important. The volume is very important. <clears throat> Anything you look at when it comes to stocks, news, fundamentals, charts, everything is past. Everything is in the past tense. It's history, except volume and price. This is the only thing that is at present tense. Anything else is past tense. <clears throat> Anything else is reflected into the price because you're not trading alone in this market. Okay? A lot of people will act much, much faster than all of us. So keep this in mind. Price and volume is happening now. Everything else is past tense. So now Apple broke below its trend line with above average volume. What would you do? You have a decent profit. Let's say that Apple went to 119. Just an example. It broke 126 and 125 and you are in the money by $6. You remember the strike 125? Our, your intrinsic value is $6. And let's assume that you have some time value. We lost from the 434, let's say $2. So you have maybe another $234. So your option to eat could worth $8 plus. This is a decent profit. This is 100% profit, roughly speaking. Just giving an example. Again, what would you do? You cannot book, not you cannot. It's not very straightforward when it comes to options to book profit because it's costly. You need to make up your mind. What would you do? This is the kind of plans. If you are in a trade, and you don't have this page in front of you, most of the time you'll take a wrong decision. Most of the time. Because you're not prepared to different scenarios. Finally, the closing notes. If you are not aware of every single detail about your trade, you're not ready to trade. <clears throat> don't get into any trade before you do a proper analysis. I know this is time consuming. So what? <clears throat> if you go into a trade and you lose, you want to recover this loss, you'll make faster decisions. Without doing any analysis, you would lose more. So it's not, it's not a waste of time. Do proper analysis. Be prepared to deal with different possible scenarios. One of them is accept losses.
this is part of trading is to accept losses. <coughs> the good thing about <coughs> options when risk is limited, because you could you could be in, in, in an options position and you have unlimited risk, but when you are in an options position and your risk is limited, you know your maximum loss. Give this will give you some peace of mind and you could be able to manage your your position more wisely i would say putting a plan just to avoid you react to situations because you will have to take decisions under stress and this will not be in your favor your emotions will definitely negatively affect your decision okay a piece of advice from experience don't try to defend your position average down roll down hedge you're just adding up to the problem this will cost you more money in spreads and commissions don't do it stick to your plan don't do it period and just a quick reminder the 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 technical analysis that we did was not inclusive was not comprehensive but just for the example because if i if i post the video if i post the three hours video nobody's going to watch it but don't count on one indicator to take a trading decision and use different time frames we looked at the daily and the weekly because our trade uh, our option will expire in 69 days but when we decide to actually <clears throat> initiate the trade, maybe we would look at the hourly chart or the 15 minutes or even the five minutes. Is this clear? I hope that my explanations were comprehensive and all the steps were clear, especially the expected move part, because I got some comments that it was not very clear in the long calls uh, video. Thank you, everyone. Good luck and have a great day.